Hello everybody, welcome to the PE Web Lecture Series. I'm Celeste and I am very excited to have you here with me today. Well, before I go into today's topic, just one quick announcement. YouTube has approved my account for videos longer than 15 minutes, which means that in the future web lectures, they are longer than 15 minutes. I will not be breaking them up into two different parts like I did for 8 Habits of Highly Productive People. Rather, I'll be having them in one single file, so hopefully that contributes to a better usage and a better viewing experience for all of you. Another thing I want to talk about um, is about the length of the web lectures. I will be recording the web lectures as long as it takes to deliver the point and uh, the message of the topic across. So I'll not really be deliberately conforming to say 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Rather, I will take as long as I need to bring the point across. And that means some web, lab web lectures can be 15, 20, 30 minutes, or maybe even longer. So I would actually recommend you to really uh, view the lectures for what they are, to really absorb the value and, and to understand and learn more about the topic and to apply the tips into your life and not really judge them based on the length. Because I promise you that the length that uh, you see on the video would be um, the, the best length um, which I require to bring the point and the value across. Okay. So for today's topic, it is about how to say no to others. And I think saying no is actually something that a lot of people grapple with. And I know that because a lot of readers often tell me like they have difficulty saying no to other people. And looking back, I realized like I myself is someone who has um, really had trouble with saying no to other people. And it's only on hindsight that I realized this. Like, I think at those points in my uh, in the, my past, when I say yes to other people, I think actually deep down subconsciously, that really wasn't what I wanted. And I didn't know at that point in time. It's only now when I look back that I realized that. And I think um, it's especially the case for me because um, of the Asian culture. In Asia, saying no to other people is usually seen as being rude and disrespectful and um, conform conforming and compromising are highly valued upon. So because of that, most people would actually want to say yes or have been brought up to say yes. And there's also the, the other element about Asian culture, which is about face saving. Face saving basically means like, um, see everyone as having a face. And this is not like a physical face, but um, a social face that you have to protect. And whenever you reject someone or you say no to someone or you do something that puts him or her in a negative light, you're, so, you're sort of not giving the person face. Okay, you're not protecting the person's social face. And that is something that is very rude to do in Asia. So whenever you do something, you have to put others before you and you have to consider their social face. And saying no is definitely a no-no for, for such situations. And that reinforces the need to say yes. So I think all these reasons compounded um, sort of just made me someone who usually try to say yes the whole time. Well, it's good to say yes. And while it's good to be someone who knows how to compromise and to support others and to conform, I also think that a line needs to be drawn. Like sometimes there's a point whereby you keep saying yes to the point where you neglect yourself. And that is not healthy at all. So I think over the years, I really learned a lot about how to say no and learning how to say no in a way that, that doesn't make me feel bad about myself because I think that is definitely not necessary. Like, I don't think saying no has to be, has to be equated with um, feeling bad or feeling guilty about it. I would say the, um, the one biggest thing I've learned about saying no is that it is really about knowing yourself. Because when I look back, I found that the times when, whereby I don't say no, like I say yes, it is because 
I don't really know myself and what I want, and I don't really know what I stand for as well. And because of that, it just makes it just made me conform. It just made me want to say yes to the people, you know, for fear that they might think badly of me, for fear that I might hurt their feelings, for fear that the relationship will be broken. You know, and a series of other things which are totally irrelevant and shouldn't be, you know, the point of consideration at all. And all these things are concerns because I, at that point, whereby I said yes, I didn't know who I was or what I stood for, or what I should really be saying no for. And as a result, that just, you know, um, they just kind of created a pattern whereby I kept saying yes, this and that. And then after that, I will sometimes feel like. I shouldn't have said yes, or I felt bad for saying yes, or I felt like I was being sort of、um, boxed in, caged in, for saying yes, and I would feel like I was stifled, and I, I would feel like I wish I didn't say yes, but then there would be no way out. And the funny thing was, this cage was a cage that I put myself in, because nobody forced me to say yes. I mean, I was the one who just. <laughs> Wanted to say yes to other people, for my own fears, like own fears, own emotional reasons, and so on. And、um, I think the biggest thing that I have really f- found that helped me to eventually learn to start saying no, you know, was when I just started learning more about myself, more about who I am, more about. What I want to stand for, more about the things that I'm passionate about, about my purpose, my reason for being, and knowing all of this just really made me find my center and made me know who I am, like my core, like deep down inside, who am I, like who is Celeste, and what do I stand for? And when I really un-、uh, answered these fundamental questions. I think just saying no was no longer a problem at all, and it became clear to me the things that I should say no to, to the things that I should say yes to, and that I shouldn't ever say no or yes to something when it's something that I don't agree with. So, so it's not like you should just you know say no to every single thing, but. It's about now you know what you stand for, what you want, and you know what you should say yes to, and you know what you should say no to. So, I think like the biggest, biggest thing I would really、uh, recommend would be just knowing yourself and what you stand for. Because if if you're someone who has great difficulty saying no, or you find instances whereby you just say yes. Even though subconsciously you actually don't want to say yes, and then you feel stifled afterwards, or you feel bad afterwards, or you, if you're someone who says no, but you do that with great difficulty and you feel guilty afterwards, maybe one like what will really help is just knowing your core, knowing yourself, and really having that as the center of you, because that's what makes up, makes you,、uh, makes you who you are. So I guess that's、um, that might be not a very conventional、um, advice or tip that you you would hear about learning to say no. But looking back and、um, seeing where I am today, I think that is probably the one biggest thing that I can ever share about、uh, saying learning how to say no and not wavering from、uh, stance and not even feeling bad about it. And I'm not even saying this like. In a robotic, cold fashion. I mean, I'm really saying this as you know, it being the way it is. You know, it's just it being the way it is. Okay, so、um, what's gonna end soon now for the second half of this web lecture is I'm gonna share eleven practical tips on how you can say no while applying what I just learned. So all these go hand in hand. I would say、um, this eleven steps will help you to. I mean, it, it serves as a digestible reminders 
on how you can say no in the times whereby you, you know you waver or you suddenly feel like in a fix. So the first tip would be to be clear of your vision. Okay, so remember just now, like the biggest thing I said about learning how to say no is knowing yourself and being clear of a vision is definitely in line with that. What is your vision? You know, what are your goals? And I find like a lot of times people say yes to everything is because they don't really know what their goals are, what their aspirations are. So for example, um, one very common example which I often talk about and on PE is when I quit my job to pursue my passion back in 2008. I said no to a high paying job, to prestige, to great traveling opportunities, to great development opportunities, to a great career path. And the reason why I did that was because I know what my vision for my life is and I knew that the job was not bringing me there. And by saying yes to staying on in the job, I was saying no to my passion, my dreams, which are way bigger, way more important to me than anything anything in the world. So knowing that, just made it so easy for me to say no to the job in that I resigned and quit. And even when the management tried to persuade me to stay on, you know, like um, they gave me offers, like, like perhaps I could go on a sabbatical and I could come back later on and so on and so forth. I was firm that, you know, I wanted to resign and it was nothing about a company, like I think it's an excellent place. I love the people, but it was really just that I wanted to pursue my dreams. So being clear of the vision is paramount when it comes to knowing what things you should say no to and to the, uh, the things you should say yes to. And you should always say no to the things that they don't support your vision. Tip number two would be to know the implications of saying yes. So you must know something. Whenever you say no to something, sorry, whenever you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. So for example, let's say you say yes to working overtime today at work. What are you saying no to? Your social life, your health and fitness? because you could have been going to the gym in the time that you spent working, your time with your family, your time with your kids. So like these are all the little hidden things that you don't really see when you say yes to something, but these implications are there. You just don't see it. And just because you don't see it doesn't mean they don't exist. And a lot of times these implications, they just accumulate and accumulate and they add up over time to the extent whereby the day they become so bad that they catch your attention, it's almost too late, if not too late to sal salvage the situation. So a simple example would be someone who keeps saying yes to working overtime, working, 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 working after working after working after working hours, working on weekends, is working every day like a robot. But what a person is neglecting and saying no to is his health, his well-being, his social life, his relationships. And then maybe one, two years or three, four years later, he finds that he's morbidly obese. He has neglected his health, his health is deteriorating, his social life almost non-existent, his friends have slowly faded away, and his family has a slowly, like, the relationships between him and his family members are distanced and so on. And these are all the implications of saying yes to working overtime every day, which has been, you know, adding on over time. So know the implications when you say yes to something, because there are always implications. There are always trade-offs in every single situation. The goal is not to try to say yes to everything. The goal is to know what matters to you and what doesn't matter to you and then say yes to the things that matter and say no to everything else. Tip number three is to realize that saying no 
it's okay. And it's funny that, you know, I have to put this as a tip, but I think like most of us have this mentality that no, we can't say no. Like, you know, if we say no, we are a bad human being, we are a bad person and we're going to suffer or we'll get bad karma. And no, that's not true at all. Like saying no and saying yes are just natural events that occur and it is really okay. You know, I think a lot of the implications that we think happen when we say no, they're just things that we we dream up in our mind. You know what? I've been saying no many, many times for the past few years. I think my life turned out okay, if not better than ever. And I think you just have to realize that saying no is really okay. I think for the people that you don't love, you should say no to them by not maintaining the relationships with them. I think for a job that you don't love, you should say no to it. I think for a relationship or a partner who isn't what you're looking for, you should should say no to him or her. So know that saying no is okay. And you should not strive to just keep saying yes all the time. Tip number four, use the medium you're most comfortable with. So I find like maybe some people are more comfortable saying no via text. Maybe some people are more comfortable saying it via email. Maybe some people are just more comfortable saying it in person. And sometimes it also depends on the context, like the situation that you're dealing with, you know, and and different mediums are more appropriate for different contexts. So use the medium you're most comfortable with and that will help to facilitate you to say no. Step number five, or tip number five, would be to keep it simple. Um, like I said just now, I think some of us really complicate the whole process of saying no. We just dream out so much things about it. And if you just keep it simple, like there's no need to come up with justifications or explanations on why you have to say no. Though you'd be nice if you can give like a simple explanation to the person for why you know, you're saying no to his or her request. But keeping it simple really helps you. And sometimes maybe the person doesn't really, is not really looking for a long explanation. The person is just, just want to know your interest in something. Okay, so just keep it simple. Tip number six, be respectful. I think a lot of the times, saying no isn't, isn't disrespectful, but rather it's how you say it that makes it respectful or disrespectful. So if you say no, and you say it in a polite, empathetic, understanding manner, then it's fine. Like, you're you're not being disrespectful at all, and the person will totally understand. So having a tone that is a positive um, and empathetic is very important. So be respectful in the way you say no. Don't be cut. Don't be rude. Don't be cutting. Okay, um, be understanding of the person's emotions. Tip number seven. Well, this is not necessary, but you can provide an alternative if you want. So for some people, it makes them feel better because it's like the person that they're rejecting, at least they have an alternative they can go to um, if they want. So, so for example, let's say, let's say your friend invites you to go to an opera event. Okay, this Friday, but you're just not into opera at all. Like you don't like it at all, and you feel like it just be too boring for you. You you're not gonna enjoy your time there, so you say no. But you don't want to leave your friend kind of like hanging, right, with nobody to go to because you know he or she has like two tickets, one for himself and herself, and one for you. So maybe you can suggest someone you know who like who loves opera, right? And then, so that's an alternative, and it's up to your friends. Um, it's up to your friend on whether he or she wants to invite your opera learning friend along. So the good thing here is you provide an alternative, and and that kind of you know, creates an an exit path, you know, for him or her. Okay. Well, step number eight: make yourself less accessible. Um. Well, and, and I'll explain what I mean by that. I was um. I would say like. When ever you make yourself right accessible, you sort of make yourself open to requests from 
everywhere under the sun. Um, and, and this is an example which I talked about in Eight Habits of Highly Productive People, the web lecture, um, which is that it is important that you set barriers to entry, like you make it slightly more difficult for people to reach you. And I think this is very important, especially when you are uh, running a business which is which has open uh, access to everybody. Um, so like for example, running a blog would be a great example. Or when you are in a high ranking position in your company and a lot of people want to talk to you, to get your advice, to get your opinion or something. What will help is, you know, if you erect certain barriers to accessing or to reaching you such that you don't have to busy yourself with saying no the whole time. It's like the barrier itself is really the no to other people. Okay, and, and for the people who do um, get through the barrier to uh, talk to you or to get your opinion on something, then you can evaluate accordingly and say whether and see whether it's something that you want to say yes or no is. So make yourself less accessible and that makes it easy for you because um, for the other people out there who want to reach you, that barrier itself is really the sign that you know it's a no. And then for the people who make the hurdle, like the effort to um, cross that barrier, then you address them on a case-by-case -case basis. Tip number nine, write down everything first. And what I mean is that I think when we try to um, say no, there's probably a lot of thoughts in our mind like, um, oh my god, what should I say? Oh my god, what is he going to think? Uh, am I being insensitive by saying this? Should I say that first? Blah, blah, blah. And I find that writing everything down first, it really helps because it's sort of, it's sort of like um, brain dumping um, the contents of your mind onto a bucket whereby the bucket here is like a word document or something like this or a piece of paper and you can see like the various thoughts and then you can organize those thoughts from there such that you can then create a structured organized um, well thought out reply to the person and this well thought out reply will help the person to understand where you're coming from rather than just kind of throwing out like a jumble of thoughts at, or him, him, at uh, him or her so writing out, uh, writing down everything first is something that I found helpful for myself, especially when I'm saying no to other people, uh, say like to a business proposal or, you know, to a certain request by a reader, etc. Um, I'll sort of just kind of type out the top line things on my mind and then maybe I'll organize a little bit after that. And like in the situations where sometimes I might feel a little bit of, um, like a lack of clarity regarding the situation or a bit of um, bit of a dilemma as to what what to say then like this really really helps for me tip number 10 would be to delay your response um, well I think that sometimes if you are not keen on the request and if the person is very persistent, like the person just keeps sending or just keeps asking again and again. Delaying a request is a way of saying no to someone else. <clears throat> so for example, um, I have had situations whereby sometimes people, they, they don't really um, take no for an answer and maybe, you know, they just keep following up uh, maybe with a request here or, or with a message there. And uh, what I do is I just start deprioritizing those messages. I'll take longer to respond to them. And um, that delay itself sometimes sends the message across that, you know, I'm just not so keen in it. And it helps because what I found is like, let's say if you reply right away, the person will then respond with like, hey, how about this or how about that? And then it just kind of like keeps going on and on. It doesn't really end, especially for the very, very persistent people. So just kind of like giving it time, you know, giving yourself time to reply sort of also gives the other person kind of time to cool off and to kind of organize his or her um, thoughts and emotions. 
So delaying your response is a, a great tip, I find, like uh, for certain situations. Okay, and now the last but not least, tip number 11. Sometimes no reply is also a form of reply. Well, um, I think this tip definitely depends on the situation. So if it's like close friends or people that you know you, you are close with, then I, I, I definitely think that um, you owe it to them to give a response, to explain. Um, but if it's like someone that's like an acquaintance or you're not really associated with, or if there's just too much of it, um, sometimes you don't need to reply. Like just leave it and the person will understand after a while that, you know, it's really a no. So, I mean, it might not be the most optimal way to uh, handle things if on a, like a situational basis. But sometimes it sort of has to be done when the situation um, sort of like getting out of hand. So, for example, for myself, um, I get quite a fair bit of uh, emails. Uh, in the past, I got even more emails when I wasn't so um, restrictive about uh, the emails I got so in the past I was really really receiving a lot of emails and it became a point where it's just really impossible to reply to every single thing like if I was spending my time in my inbox um, just replying to emails I don't think I have time to do anything man I don't think I would have time to create to launch the inspirational quote series I don't think I would have time to create like the web lecture series I don't think I would have time to, to, to do anything I think I would just be like um, the, in, the inbox monster, like just replying to emails every day, just, hey, you know, sorry, but da 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 da. Um, yeah, so I think like for such situations where it's just too much, sometimes just not replying is a form of reply in itself. So that's it for today's video. 11 tips on how to say no. I hope you found it useful. As always, please share some love. If you found this web lecture useful, please like the video on YouTube. Uh, please post um, a comment uh, on whether you like the video uh, or even topics that you want to see in the future. I'm open to suggestions. And um, subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Celestin Chua. If you want to see the article on how to say no, this is the URL personalexcellence.co which is .co slash blog slash how to say no with a hyphen in between each words so it's how dash to dash say dash no okay thanks a lot and i'll see you guys in the next video bye